Hello and welcome to Entrepreneur Journey. And today my guest is Rob Brown. Rob Brown is a business coach and the author of Truest Fan. Awesome. How are you there? How day are you, Rob? Ah, how are you today, Rob? <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's just so much fun to um, be invited to participate um, in a cause like this one to be able to talk about Truest Fan because it's a real important um journey that I think uh, uh, a lot of people should take. Yeah, I am. I, I've read the book cover to cover and I'm a truest fan of, of truest fan. <laughs> so awesome. Yes, I appreciate that. You're welcome. So tell us a little bit about yourself, um, about being the author of truest fan and about what you do um, as far as um, a profession. Or a sure. So so as you said, um, Doug, I'm a, I'm a business coach. Uh, my clients are primarily uh, financial professionals, financial advisors, financial planners, um, although I do work with some other professionals. And um, I really work um, in a very comprehensive uh, basis, you know, doing everything from structuring teams to helping with marketing, um, you name it, um, I, I help with that. And what I like to think of myself as being as someone who, who is very good with strategy but finds that too often we get lost in strategy and forget about tactics. So I like to combine tactics with strategy in my coaching. And uh, Truest Fan, um, to some people, may not seem like a book that's at all about coaching um, or the work that I do, but the seven lessons that I teach in Truest Fan come from my coaching and the things, the lessons that my clients, the big lessons that my clients have taken away who have been the most successful. So that's where the, where the, where the book came from, even though it's not, you know, a how to book. Yeah. Those, those seven things, um, there are a few that really resonated with me. So I am so glad that you had sent me the book and I was able to read it. I have, I have a few getting to know you questions. What sure. has been your favorite moment at it? Well, let's preface this with, I know you're a huge Cleveland Indians fan, so can you tell me yeah. your favorite moment from a Cleveland Indians game? You know, I was thinking about that question and that's a tough one. So I'm going to say that it was yesterday wow. uh, because I was at opening day in Cleveland um, after a year of not being able to go see a game in the pandemic. And there's, there's nothing like opening day of the baseball season. So um, I've been to lots of, a lot of great games, but I have to put that one at the top right now. Nice, nice. The, the best game is the latest game. Uh, not always. We even lost that oh. game, but it was still a great oh, game. I was, nice, I, was, nice. I was there with a, um, with a client and friend. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we both share a passion for the Indians, and this is our second uh, opening day that we've attended together, so we've decided that we're going to make it a tradition of sorts. So just, uh, just, it's just part of being, of being a fan of the Cleveland Indians makes uh, made yesterday a real special day. Nice. Popcorn, peanuts, or Cracker Jack? Peanuts. Uh, there's no nice. way around it. Peanuts, <laughs> peanuts, peanuts. <laughs> and, and and being from Cleveland, do you also root for the Browns? I do. I do. Although nice. it's harder to root for the Browns um, <laughs> for, for lots of reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Browns fan, and I'm happy to see that we actually have a team mm -hmm. that we can put on the field these days. Yeah, yeah, I, it, it's kind of getting exciting around there in Cleveland for for the Browns. It is favorite hobby outside of following Cleveland baseball. You know, this is another tough one because if you ask uh, my wife where I spend more time than um, than watching Indians games or working, it's um, it's at church. My favorite hobby mm -hmm. is spending time at, at, in my church, uh, volunteering in different ways. I just I love to be part of of uh, the life of my church and the things that we're able to do um, through the different uh, ministries that we're, that we're a part of. So that's, 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 that's really it. That's, that's a good hobby to have. Sir, you're serving people. Nice. Yeah. It, it, and it keeps you out of trouble. That's, that's right. That's right. Uh, so now I have some questions just around your entrepreneurial journey in general. How did, sure. how did you get to becoming a business coach? So um, as I mentioned, my clients are primarily financial professionals, and I spent um, 25 years as a financial advisor, um, and I sold my advisory practice um, about a dozen years ago. 
Um, but at the, at the tail end, when I, when I sold my practice or the, the, around the time that I sold my practice, I was also um, helping run a firm that had about 250 advisors. And I was looking at all of the things that I was doing, um, both as an advisor and as an executive in that firm, the thing that I enjoyed the most was mentoring other financial professionals, helping them with their businesses. And so um, the time just became right. And I said, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go out and do this on my own. And there were some you know, kind of combo years where I did a little bit of coaching and a little bit of financial advising at the same time. But that's that's really the genesis of of striking out and, and deciding to open my own practice to uh, to do business coaching. Nice. Uh, the hardest thing about being an entrepreneur. Um, I love new things. I love breaking new things down. So sometimes the hardest thing for me is saying uh, for even even I guess it's, it's kind of like um, it's, it's the lesson that I that I teach my clients. It's like, you know, put away the distractions, focus on what is most important. And I think that's probably for me continuously the hardest thing because there's there's always something else that I'd like to to try. And uh, and mm -hmm. actually one of the lessons in the book is. Uh, is really all about uh, spending time on your most important work, and um, and and that's 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 probably the the lesson that I need the most, uh, the most often at least. Yeah, I, I like to call that entrepreneurial brain, and a lot of people have it. We're always want to do this and that, and it's it's sometimes hard to focus for entrepreneurs because we're always want to do um, more. So no, I, I think that's absolutely <laughs> right. So uh, what is the best thing about being an entrepreneur? Um, you know, it's, 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 it's really being able to make a difference in the lives of my clients and then watch them make a difference in the lives of their clients. And so you can just see your work multiply. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and, and maybe that's not exclusive to being an entrepreneur, um, but but just that whole idea of 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 helping other people grow, seeing them succeed, and then see the part of their success is a success in their businesses and with their clients. There's just like a, an exponential effect. It's like compound interest, and I think that's what um, motivates me the most. Yeah, you and I share the uh, same favorite thing. That I love to see my clients succeed as well. So uh, we are in agreement on that. Good. I good. I know from uh, reading your book that you are a big believer in the value of relationships. Can you tell me uh, or tell our audience a little bit more about uh, why you think establishing good relationships is uh, vital to an entrepreneur? You know, I don't think you can do business without relationships. Uh, no matter what kind of business you're in, you ultimately um, have to work with clients or customers and you have to have a relationship with them. Um, if you're building a team, you have to have a relationship with the people that you work with um, to be able to come up with that common goal to work towards those big things that you want to uh, want to accomplish. So um, I, I was actually listening to a podcast the other day, and it was suggested that maybe relationships, connections is the number one most important attribute of a successful business owner, a successful entrepreneur, because without relationships, there's, there's no place else you go. You can't, you can't do it. Um, you can't do it on your own as much as you might like to try. Um, you have to have relationships and, um, and they're, they're vital. Yeah. I, I'm totally in agreement with that too. So as a business coach, uh, who, do, who are your primary clients? As I've mentioned, they're, they're primarily financial advisors, um, they're financial planners who do uh, fee-based planning, or they're registered investment advisors who uh, who manage who manage money and do some planning. Um, most of them are um, either um, totally independent; they have their own businesses, or they may be affiliated as, a, as an independent contractor. Uh, with a with a larger firm, but mostly they're independent financial professionals who do um, investment management and financial planning. And what t sort of problems do you help them solve? You know, it's it's the um, you know the cobbler's kids don't have you know nice <laughs> shoes. Um, you know, uh, financial planners are 
and, and, and registered investment advisors are really good at managing money, helping other people put plans in place to accomplish their goals. But sometimes they don't have their own clear plans. And so um, what I really try to do is help uh, my clients understand very clearly what that mental picture is of their future success and then come up with the steps that they need to follow to achieve that level of success. Uh, for some of them, it might be improving their marketing. They just need to uh, bring in more clients or more assets under management. So we'll focus more on marketing. Uh, for others, it might be building teams. How do we build the right teams to make sure we have the right people on the bus guiding our clients or their clients um, uh, forward? Um, other times it might be working on succession plans Just help the clients um, sell his um, business. So, so let's switch gears a little bit, Rob. I know that you have uh, just, writ just written Truest Fan. Um, can you tell us why you wanted to write that book? Yes, um, it's a great story. It's one of my favorite because, um, I don't know, back in the early 1980s, I read Ken Blanchard's book, The One Minute Manager. And um, if you've not read that book, it's told, it's a short book told in a fable style. And as soon as I finished that book, I said, one day I'm going to write a fable style book. I didn't know what it was going to be about, but I was going to write one fashioned after Ken Blanchard's book. And of course, Ken's written many other books since then. I've read, I've, I've read many business fables. It's, it's my best, it's my favorite way to learn, I think. And, um, and so, um, Last year, I just said, you know, it's time to stop thinking about that. I, I, I've written a book before. Uh, I wanted to write another one, but I wanted to do it the way that I, I, I've i always hoped to do it. And uh, and that's what got me got me started. And when I sat down to write it, I, I really didn't even know exactly what it was. I want to write it, what it, what I wanted to write about. But I went through a creative process uh, to help me kind of brainstorm on the idea and um, God was certainly at work um, behind the scenes, helping me come up um, with those words as well. Well, it is an amazing book. Here it is. I've read it cover to cover. Um, as soon as I picked it up, I read it cover to cover. And I, like I said, I am a big fan of, of the book. Can you give the audience just a little synopsis of, of what the book is about? Yes. So um, the, the book is a uh, kind of combines my love of family, God, and the Cleveland Indians <laughs> into a story um, that um, is really weaving together seven lessons. And, and, this, and the story is really a journey of the main character. Um, I, I named him Brownie in the book. Uh, many people think um, that I was writing about myself. And because I was writing the book, I, I, I'm definitely part of that character, but Brownie just walks through um, the series of encounters of people who are teaching him the seven truest fan lessons. Um, and, um, and, and, it, and so the book just takes the reader through that journey, teaching them those lessons and why, uh, why they're so important. I, I will tell you when I read it, I did not think, I did not, did not know it was a fable. I did think it was you. And I thought it was, I, I was, I was in it. I was, I was, I was in the story, so I, I loved it. Right, right, and and I'm, that, that is that is like that is like I think maybe one of the highest compliments um, that you could make a, about the book to me is, be, that, is that you felt like you were in it because that, that's really what I wanted. I wanted the reader to feel like they were they were in it, and I I didn't know a better way to do that than um, than than put than kind of putting myself into the story um, as much as I could, even though I wasn't. I wasn't writing a, a, a you know an autobiography. I was really telling a make-believe um, story. Um, each one of the of the characters that you meet in the book mm -hmm. represents somebody that I have met in my life who has influenced me in the way that their lesson is taught. But it isn't necessarily the exact encounter. Um, many of the encounters are at um, Cleveland Indians uh, baseball games. And so that, that just makes it fun. It kind of keeps the story alive. Um, but, but some of those people have never been to a Cleveland Indians uh, baseball game. Well, I want, I want to say thank you for writing the book. Like I said, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I think everybody should, should pick up a copy because it, it is a wonderful read and uh, there are some really valuable lessons in it. Uh, thank you, Rob, for being here. Um, 
where can people go to get the book? Best place to go is to go to truestfan.com. Um, and when you go to truestfan.com, there's some more information about the book so you can learn a little bit more. And then there's a button that takes you to buy it. Um, I'm directing most people to Amazon right now because um, that's, the, that's the quickest place to get your uh, hands on it. But it's available at most uh, online bookstores. And one thing I would also throw at you is when you um, get your copy of the book, you'll notice in the very beginning of the book, um, I offer a complimentary implementation guide. And I won't give away the secret on this call to get an implementation guide. I want you to get a copy of the mm -hmm. book first. But with that implementation guide, there's also a complimentary seven-part video series on implementing the ideas that gets you started on implementing the ideas in the book. So, um, so the, the book is great to read, but it's even better when you can put those lessons into action. So, so book buyers get some additional opportunities. Yeah, totally agree. Let's start a movement. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. All right, Rob, like I said, it's been a pleasure having you on uh, the entrepreneur journey and have a wonderful day. Yeah, uh, thank you for having me. And I really appreciate your um, your servant attitude and the way that you go about your business. So I just see you out there all the time helping other people. And I know that's a great way to build a business because you're you're building true as fans. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rob. Bye. You're welcome.